Hi there. I hope you've been doing well if you've been lucky enough to be able to keep working from home. Uh, I'm based here in Melbourne in Australia and uh, we've been in a second lockdown for a number of weeks now and because of the limitations to getting back to the office and getting back to work as business as usual it means that I've actually been working from home for the last six months. Now, previous to working inside a bank, I was doing freelance photography and design and animation. So I was used to just having my laptop and working in lots of different environments, like a design studio or working from home or going to a production studio with um, video editing suites. So now that I'm based at home in my living room all the time with a, a PC business laptop, um, sending emails and going on video calls and trying to organize and plan things. It's a very different rhythm to the kind of work I was doing previously, which was the same kind of work, but I would go and do that in, as in an office environment and I would put on a suit and those sorts of things. Now, I've gotten back into the process of wearing a suit again, or just at least a collared shirt and, and some dress pants, because I found that over time I was beginning to get a much more sort of casual and relaxed um, kind of outfit and wardrobe and I found it was really impacting my ability to be really focused and think about delivering value and think about what do I need to deliver now in a way that I don't when I'm actually relaxing and when I'm doing my own thing. Outside of work hours, I might be reading or um, watching some content or making some food or doing some gym activity, whatever I'm doing, um, that's kind of my time. And I've just been making sure that I really make that separation between work time and personal time. And part of that, I think, is always wearing your work clothes, if you like. Um, and even though I'm not wearing the house, I'm sort of starting to do that now. So that's been helping me a little bit. And the reason I wanted to do this video is that I was watching a few videos recently online and I came across one from Simon Sinek, which is the, uh, he's the author of this book called Start With Why, which is one of the great books that I've read this year. And um, he's a really well-known um, speaker and, and, and sort of leader. And one of the things that he was talking about in this video, and I'll, I'll put the link below, was around um, how sort of millennial uh, and Gen Z are treated in the workplace and some of the challenges that they have. And... Um, went through a whole bunch of different reasons uh, about why um, they are different and, and, and respond differently in the workplace and can sometimes get a, a hard time from um, more experienced managers who might be Gen X or, or baby boomers who have a different view on how the world should be and how you should just get on with your job and believe in yourself and, and um, stop being such a, a crybaby. Well, the reality is that there's a lot of different reasons why people um, respond differently in a workplace and find it challenging to uh, be focused and, and make progress. And I think that's even more important now when people are working from home. We're all very isolated and it's difficult to keep focused and, and keep on track. So one of the things that I was um, thinking about was the points that he made in this video, which was around, I suppose, the four key things that, that millennials need to do for themselves, but also how we need to be able to support them in work environments. And that is to develop confidence, to think long term, to be patient, and to develop job satisfaction. Um, it's very easy for a lot of young people to just, if the job is too hard, they'll just decide to switch. And even in my career, technically I'm Generation X, but I'm just on that little um, bit in between. And certainly as a, as a digital person, I, I um, definitely um, sort of identify more as a millennial than a Generation X. I don't have kids and stuff running around, so I'm definitely in that, in that sort of millennial um, environment. And one of the things I've found that over my career, the average um, time I'd have a job is about two and a half years, and it's been longer in the last few years since I've been working inside a corporation versus when I was doing freelance and working for different studios and, and those sorts of things. So I've found that my roles are changing less frequently than they did before, but a lot of young people really struggle. If they just don't like the job, they don't like their manager, things are difficult, they will just give up and say, well, I'm going to leave anyway. And jobs really are like having a relationship, and you can't just say, well, I'm going to leave, it's too hard. You've really got to make a decision to commit and actually be patient and, and, and develop the role. Is it the way that you communicate with your manager? Is it the working style of the tasks that you're working on? Is it your understanding of the field that you're in? Do you need to learn some new skills? Do you need to shadow people? Do you need a mentor? Asking these kinds of questions about ourselves helps us to develop job satisfaction, but I think being able to support other people to ask those questions and find their way through is really important. So I was just sort of bringing this back to myself and thinking about my, I suppose, my background has been across a, a range of different industries and a range of different um, environments. And I've got a lot of value to share with people. And the, frank, the, the, the thing about myself is that I'm actually still quite shy. 
I don't think that I could have possibly anything that people would want to know about. But the reality is that I do. I've worked as a graphic designer, as a videographer, as a um, video editor, uh, an animation designer, um, visual effects um, editor. Um, I've done all these different creative fields and filmmaking and TV commercials and online advertising. Then I moved into corporate communications and now I'm actually working inside a bank doing international business development. I'm working with these businesses trying to understand how that they can grow and how they trade internationally and how we can make that easier um, for them to do business. And that relates to the things that I'm very passionate about around e-commerce and marketing and the fact that you can develop a brand and sell it all around the world. These are things that I've been fascinated about for a long time and that's been my whole journey of putting those things together in my career. So I have to remind myself that some of that is useful and even if it's only useful to one person, it is important for me to share that with you. So if you're the one view that I get on YouTube by watching this and it's been helpful for you and you'd like to know more, uh, know more about um, my history and where I've been and, and how I can help you, um, please let me know in the comments below if you've got questions about where you're at in your career or how you'd like to change what you do or uh, you're, you're worried about being uh, becoming freelance or, or those sorts of things or, or how you get back into the job market. I feel very, very fortunate that I've, I've been able to be in a career now for the last few years where I have much higher job security than I had in the past when I was doing other kinds of roles. And for those people out there who have been have had a real knock, their, the business and, and the creative stuff that they've been doing for the last few years has dried up and they've really got to uh, look at how to do a new career or switch into something new or kind of do that refresh of, their, um, of the CV or the resume and get back out there. Um, that's something that I've had to do many, many times through my career. So I really want to help people to do that. So I know my friends and family have been asking me around how did I switch between different careers and different modes between being an employee, being a contractor, being a freelancer and running my own business. I get asked that all the time. So I thought, well, maybe that's the content and the value that I can share with people to, to help explain that. So I'm hoping that over time I will make it, it a bit more structured and it will hopefully make more sense. But the key thing that I wanted to share is that I have a huge amount of enthusiasm and that's a difficult thing to have right now when things are really, really difficult. I know many people will have businesses that are falling over and they'll have to restart and start from scratch again and people have lost their jobs and they've um, been, have, had to be forced out of a company because it's, it's shrunk. Um, that's really horrible and it's really tragic and that's a horrible thing to happen right now. But that kind of thing happens every seven to 10 years in, in a normal economic cycle. So I'm very positive about the way to move through that and to face that challenge and to pick up and, and restart yourself again. Um, because I, I essentially grew up living in New Zealand where our economy would boom and bust like that all the time. You had to be very agile and, and adapt to this new environment and change and, and suddenly be doing a different job every few years. So I want to try and share that passion that I have for being... Um, agile and getting back on the horse so to speak and getting back out, back out there because I truly believe that you have value if you've already been working for someone if you've created your own business if you're doing some kind of output if you if you've been able to pay your rent before with the kind of work that you can do then you can definitely do it again and people hire other people really based on their personality they need to know that you can do the job that you might have some relevant qualifications and skills but it's really your personality that's going to get you the job and your enthusiasm to work with that organization and it's really difficult to get those things back when you've had a bit of a knock so that's what i really want to help people to find within themselves and also to inspire other people to do that that you can collaborate with other people and help each other and really as a community, try to get yourselves back on track and, and help each other to recover from what is obviously the worst um, economic impact that we're going to see probably in our lifetimes. And it's really hard to get back to that mindset of being positive and having a growth mindset and, and moving forwards. But luckily here, it's, uh, it's springtime in Melbourne, the sun is shining. And even though I can't go outside for more than, I think, an hour at the moment or maybe two hours for exercise at the most, and there's an 8 p.m. curfew, um, I'm still positive that things will recover and there will be opportunities in the road ahead. So in the meantime, if I'm stuck at home, I might as well be creating some content and sharing it with you so that you can get some value out of it. So anyway, that's it from me today. So thanks for watching and I'll hear from you soon. Bye.